In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own recasts. If you're new here, go and click that subscribe button to make sure you never miss out on any of my new videos. I'm Benji and welcome to Benji's Hobbies. In one of my recent videos, I showed you how I went about building my own miniature bases out of MDF and XPS foam. Whilst I think they look really good and fit perfectly with my Stormcast army I'm building, I'm not sure how durable they'll be in the long term, so instead I'm going to recast them in resin. Wait, you thought I was going to be recasting miniatures, didn't you? No chance. So before I get to making moulds and casting these, I need to make sure that my foam masters are sealed and as durable as can be. The last thing I want is to be picking out bits of foam from the final moulds if these fall apart in the process. I'm going to water down some Mod Podge in a 1 to 1 ratio. This will mean that the Mod Podge is nice and thin and won't obscure any detail as this is applied. I carefully apply this all over the bases, making sure I get into the deeper recesses between the bricks and around the edges of the MDF. Once I have fully applied the first coat, I leave it to dry fully and move on to the next base. Once the first layer has dried, I then apply a second layer over the top, again trying to get into all the nooks, crannies and recesses between the bricks, but without obscuring any of the detail. It's really worth taking your time doing this, as it will make it far easier to remove them cleanly from the moulds, as I'll show you later on in this video. Next up is making the mould boxes, which will be used to create the shape of your moulds and keep your silicon from escaping. In my head, I had a few ideas about how to make these, including how to make reusable ones, but eventually I settled on the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. If you're anything like me, you'll have a few old takeaway containers in your kitchen cupboards. And after testing them out for size, I found that they were the perfect fit for some of the bases I would be making molds for. For the larger mould that would contain nine of the smaller bases, I couldn't find anything to hand that would fit them all in, so instead I had to make my own box. I cut this Foamex offcut into four equal length pieces. I had thought to make a reusable and adjustable mould box, but after a few false starts with some plastic glue that refused to set, and super glue that had unfortunately dried up, I opted to go with the simplest option and stick it together with a hot glue gun. I'm going to use a piece of clear acrylic as my baseboard for these moulds. The smooth surface should make it easy not only to attach the mould boxes to, but also remove the moulds from once they're set. I placed the acrylic sheet over my cutting mat initially, so I could mark out where I wanted all the bases to go using the grid. I wanted to leave approximately a centimetre gap between each base, so this was a handy guide to help me with this. I stuck the bases to the acrylic sheet with double sided tape, but one piece of advice here is to make sure that the bases are thoroughly stuck down. You'll see why shortly. Once the bases were down, I used a hot glue gun to stick the mould boxes to the surface. I could have almost certainly got away with using less glue for this, but I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't end up with silicon running all over my desk. Now comes the first fun part, mixing the silicon. I'm using this two part silicon from CFS. One part is the silicon and the other part is the catalyst, which are mixed together in a ratio of 10 to one. To make this really easy for myself, I decide then rather try and work out exactly how much I'd need and then work out the ratios from there. I'd mix the entire pot, guaranteeing the right ratios, even if I had a bit left over at the end. I poured the big tin into a jug and tried to get as much as I could out of it with a stirring stick. Then I added the bottle of Catalyst in and mixed it together slowly in a folding motion. The aim is to get as few bubbles as possible into the mix, so avoid mixing fast which could add air into the mixture. 
Unlike resin, this silicon has a really long pot life, which means it takes a while to go off, so there isn't a rush to pour this into the mold boxes. Before I pour the silicon, I give the mold boxes and masters a quick spray with Maxil mold release. At £15 a tin, this stuff isn't particularly cheap, but if it makes it easy to remove the mold later, I'm all for it. There are cheaper silicon sprays available, but as this one came highly recommended by Matt Davis of Generation Shift, a bona fide expert in resin bases, I decided to give it a go. Now for the pour. I'm trying to pour the silicon from a height with the aim of removing as many air bubbles as I can. Don't worry too much about spreading the silicon around, you can simply pour it in one corner and the silicon will eventually self-level due to its viscosity. Thankfully, there was just enough silicon in this batch to fill these mold boxes to the level I needed. In hindsight, I should have probably worked out roughly how much I needed. The last thing I would want is to be slightly short at this stage. Despite the high pour, I could still see lots of bubbles within the silicon. A few bangs on the table were enough to dislodge these and help them rise to the surface, but in hindsight, I don't think I really needed to worry about them that much. With the pour done, it's now just a 24 hour waiting game as I let the silicon cure and hope it all goes to plan. So despite my best efforts to take down my masters, one of the f***ing things decided to come loose and float to the surface like some sort of gelatinous monster coming out of the sea. Fortunately, this wasn't a huge problem and I'm glad to say that the rest of the moulds seem to have turned out okay. I used a scraper tool to help remove some of the glue from around the mould boxes and loosen it from the acrylic bottom. And this is where I sort of regret using so much glue to stick them all together. With the mould separated from the boxes and the surface, it's time to see how easily I can take out the masters. Thankfully, due to a combination of being well sealed with Mod Podge and the use of the mold release spray, the masters mostly came out intact, with only one suffering from some slight damage. The molds are looking great and it looks like they've managed to retain loads of detail from the masters. Despite my nervousness about air bubbles in the silicon, none of them seem to have caused any issues in the molds. With my moulds made, it's time to start casting some bases out of resin. For this, I'm using a two-part casting resin, which is mixed together in a one-to-one -one ratio by weight. Before mixing the resin, it's worth giving your moulds a quick spray with Maxil, as this will help you remove the cast later once the resin has set. I'd advise doing this before you mix the resin, as it only has a pot life of three to four minutes, so you don't want to risk wasting your batch. I use my kitchen scales to weigh out equal weights of each part before pouring both parts into one cup and mixing with a coffee stirrer. I then slowly pour the resin into each of the mould openings until it reaches the top. If you overfill them slightly, it's not a huge problem. Just use a coffee stirrer or a piece of card to remove the excess so it forms a thin layer over the top of the moulds. Unlike the silicon, the resin cures quickly and in less than an hour, the bases are ready to be removed from the moulds. Thanks to the mould release, they are really easy to remove and easily slid out without needing to force them. And with that, they are finished and done and I'm ready to make some more. As it's so quick and easy to do, I managed to knock out a couple of batches in the same afternoon. I've not yet decided on how I'm going to paint them to match my bronze cast army, but now I have plenty of blank canvases to experiment with. So just a few pointers and considerations to make before you go away and make your own bases. Whilst this project has been really rewarding, from taking bits of MDF and foam and making them into cast resin bases, it hasn't been cheap. Whilst the cost of the bases and foam were negligible, the silicon, mould release and resin weren't costing at around £65. 
If you're only planning on making a few bases for a small army, it might be far more cost effective for you to simply buy some pre-made resin bases from an established manufacturer. If on the other hand you have plans for a bigger army, like I do, or are planning to sell your designs, you might find that you can justify the initial outlay. I'm not planning on making these available to the general public, but I am planning on making them available to my patrons soon, so if you want your chance to get hold of some unique bases for your army and want to help me bring you more projects like this on the channel, please go and check out the link to my Patreon program down in the description below. As always guys, thanks so much for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, go and click that subscribe button and the bell icon down below so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. In my next video, I am planning on painting up a variety of these bases in different styles. So if you want to see that, make sure you go and click the subscribe button. Hope to see you guys in the next video.